when I first actually listened to a private podcast from a program I was in, I was like, oh my gosh, this changes everything. It just blows my mind. And I could suddenly go on walks with it and I could, you know, listen to it in the airport and it was just so much better. So as soon as I realized like how helpful that was from the consumer side, I was like, yes, we need to have one of these. All right, welcome back to another case study episode. I am so excited to have Brittany Long, CEO of Impact Driven AI with us today. I've been so excited to talk with you because I know you're using private podcasts for so many different ways in your business. And I'm so excited for people to hear what you're doing. So many really fun, innovative and personal ways, which I think there's going to be a lot of folks that are interested and maybe do this for themselves. So so excited to talk about that. But before we dive in, why don't you tell us a little bit about your business and kind of your business model? Sure. So I actually have multiple brands. We have one in email marketing. We have one in AI. And I've had a lot of different business models as well. I definitely like to try things, see what I like and don't like, throw away what I don't like, and run forward with what I do like. And so it's allowed me to really set up my business so that it's enjoyable for me and it's fun. And it also has the biggest impact that we possibly can. So With Impact Driven AI, we help people learn how to add AI into their business, either through copy or we take a holistic approach with one of our programs. And that's the majority of what we do. We call it, you know, AI for a regret-free life because I had a cancer scare, Ash, probably six, seven years ago now. And it really changed my perspective on how I wanted to live my life and how I wanted to show up in the world. And so I figured if I can use emails, if I can use AI to do less of like the mundane tasks that kind of you know, don't feel like they're really adding much to the world, adding much to my life, but still need to get done, then that's that's a win for me. So one of the things I really admire about how you run your business, and I think it speaks to exactly what you just said, is you're val- very values driven mm-hmm. and you show up. And I think you set a great example for other entrepreneurs who have probably been exposed to other messages of the hustle culture mm-hmm. and um, lots of sacrifice and, and all of that. We've both seen a lot of it, right? Mm-hmm. We've all seen it probably listening on the internet. And I love the way you show up for your people. And I know you genuinely care mm-hmm. about your people and your people's success. And that comes through in how you deliver your products as well. And so I think I, I love that you're using audio for a lot of different ways. And I feel like that really aligns with not only how you live your life and how you want to show up in your business, which is with more ease and and on your terms, right? But you're also enabling other people to do that as well. And I think that's one thing that comes through really, really strong in a lot of your program. I'm really glad to hear that because I try really hard to make it that way. I mean, there's just so much more to life than just work. And I I think if you had asked me that a year before I had that cancer scare, I would have been like, no, work harder, do more. Because that's kind of how I grew up, you know, is that you just work really, really hard for as long as you can. And but when I had that cancer scare, I was like, oh, crap, there's there's got to be more to life than just working really hard all the time. And I do work really hard on the things I really enjoy. But it's like I I used to say, oh, give everything 100 percent. But that just doesn't make sense. Like, it doesn't make sense for me to, you know, give something 100 percent that I could either delegate to someone else so they could do it because they enjoy doing it or that I could have AI help me with. But not everything, and I think this might be a little controversial, but I don't think everything needs to be 100%. I think the things that matter, that's great. Do 100% for that and do, you know, the things that matter to you, the things that enhance your life, enhance other people's lives, but not everything needs to be 100%. And yeah, that was, that cancer scare was a big shift for me. My dad had two major strokes. He was in intensive care for about a week and it was just a really scary time. But he said, you know, I wish I'd spent more time with you and your brother. And that was something that has stuck with me too, that. I mean, hopefully I won't be in ICU in 30, 40, 50 years. But if I am in a position like that, I don't want to be saying the same things. And I'm really glad that my dad shared that with me because otherwise, sometimes you just don't know things until you get to that point. And so I feel like with the cancer scare, a lot of people experience something that like that later in life. And I'm really thankful I got to experience it in my, I think it was my late 20s, early 30s. And then same thing with what my dad shared with me. I'm glad that I got to hear that now instead of experiencing it later on. And so I hope that maybe somebody listening, it can be that moment for them too. Yeah. And I appreciate you sharing that. For me, I know you were a former educator. Mm -hmm. So you've kind of lived that space. I was in corporate. Mm -hmm. And so I went through, but similarly, if you would have asked me 20 plus years ago when I was in corporate, it was how many hours can I work? And it's all about, you know, that corner office and all the things. And It wasn't until my dad got cancer Mm. that shifted that perspective for me. And I think what I love about 
what you're doing and what you're helping other entrepreneurs and other business owners and other creators do is using AI to still deliver, still get things done and still excel mm -hmm. and still grow, but do it also more on and with ease and more on their own terms. And I think the, the cool part about what people are going to find out about how you're using private podcast and AI today is that you're doing it in such innovative ways that a lot of folks are not doing. And I think mm -hmm. you're really introducing some really cool, cool ways for people to, I think, yeah, I've seen personal growth. We can talk a little mm -hmm. bit about that in terms of, of what you're using uh, both audio and AI for, which I love the combination. And just also helping your customers succeed and making it easier for them to consume your content. Because I know you're spending time and you're putting a lot of heart and energy into that content. So using private podcasts to allow people, making it easier and more accessible to them, it feels like that. Yeah, because ultimately, I mean, selfishly, their success is my success. The more people that have success in the program, the more people that want to join and have that same success. But then thinking about it from like a legacy standpoint, it really matters to me that the stuff that I'm doing matters to somebody else, that it's impactful to somebody else. For me, I know that if I can show an entrepreneur that they can use AI to not have to work as much as they're working right now, not only that can that shift how they view work in their own lives, but it also impacts how their kids see work. Um, and what their kids see is possible, too, for their future, too, that, yeah, you know, mom or dad can do the stuff that they want to do and they can help people and they can make money and it doesn't have to take them all day and they don't have to miss my soccer game or whatever it is. And so for me, it's not just about how this is impacting the entrepreneurs I work with. It's how it's impacting their kids, their grandkids. Like for me, this is a long term generational shift that I'm trying to help facilitate. And not just like, hey, can I make some money and help people use AI? Like it's it's just a lot deeper than that. Because I really genuinely believe that when we see other options, we get to see what else is possible. So when your kids, your grandkids see that something else is possible because of how you're doing it, you get to be that role model that shows them and changes like your entire family future, you know? And that's, it's so cool to be part of that. It's amazing. And I, I love what you said because I have a 15-year-old and an 18-year-old, so a little older, and, you know, really just starting to use AI within the last, call it a year, right, or so. It's like when we started introducing it. But as I learn more, they're learning more, like you said, because mm -hmm. that's just the, na the nature of how we share things with our kids and how we give them insights and help them do things a little bit easier, you know. And I think what you said is so important because there is such a ripple effect in that mm -hmm. family and in that, in our community, I would even mm -hmm. say at large. And I love that you're making that. So with that in mind, I would love for you to share some of the ways that you're specifically using audio and AI, because there's some really unique things that I don't, there's some things that I never even heard of before you started doing it. And I love the fact that you introduced us to it. Yeah. So the first ways that I had been using it and have, have continued to use it is through private podcasts for my programs. And that's pretty typical. I see a lot of people doing that. I actually, before I started doing it, I didn't really think it was a big deal. And I'd see people saying, oh, we have a private podcast. I'd be like, ah, yeah, yeah, I don't need that. And then the first one I actually started listening to, especially on Hello Audio, because it's just so easy to go through instead of like if it's in the course platform, you have to like press play and then go back. And if I'm working on the treadmill, I don't want to have to keep going back and forth. But when I first actually listened to a private podcast from a program I was in, I was like, oh my gosh, this changes everything. It just blows my mind. And I could suddenly go on walks with it and I could listen to it in the airport and it was just so much better. So as soon as I realized like how helpful that was from the consumer side, I was like, yes, we need to have one of these. So pretty much every program, we have a private podcast now that goes with it. And with AI 200K, for example, we have like the trainings that we do. But then I also have mindset stuff in there too, which people are like, okay, that was like my favorite part. Please do more of those. And so we have mindset in there. We have the trainings in there. And that's been really helpful for folks. Sometimes it's just like short five minute things, but it's like just enough for them to kind of get going with the day. So those are two ways that we use it, or I guess one way of the private podcast. We've also used it as a paid product. So we have something called behind the scenes private podcast or behind the um, business plan, sorry, private podcast. And basically I think about like Alex Hormozy, for example, or I think about Actually, I was at a Hormozy event just a few weeks ago, and he said this too. He's like, I really wish that Jeff Bezos had a podcast or had something like that when he was just starting out so I could see the ups and downs and hear all of that. And so I was thinking about that, and I was like, man, you know, I'm not any, I'm not Jeff Bezos. I'm not Alex Hormozy, but there's going to be people that are starting where I started that will want to hear the ups and downs and will want to be able to go to that last episode. Almost like when you read a book and you go to the last chapter of the book, and you're like, okay, this is how it ends. It's going to be a good book. I'm going to read all of it. And 
I really wish I could go back and hear some of the stories from people that I listen to now. Some of the people that you look at them and you're like, oh, they have it all together, but they didn't always have it together. <laughs> and so I had a private, I have a private podcast for that where people can kind of listen. And a lot of it is just me sharing, here's what I'm thinking, here's what I'm doing, here's what I'm struggling with here's what's working for us. And um, it's cool for them to be able to hear the ups and downs of all of that and like see a realistic, you know, pull back the curtain kind of view. Because a lot of times with entrepreneurs, we see like the polished view, the reels we don't see unless it's like a reel that is a trend that everybody's like, here's all the things that suck right now. For the most part, we just see people saying, here's all this awesome stuff. And I made a bazillion dollars. And you don't see the struggle that it took to get there. You don't see the failed business ideas or the failed products or the, you know, crying at night. And so it sounds a lot more depressing, I think, it's not talking it out loud than it is, but you see the ups and downs. I think a lot of people want that. So that's that one. And then we have, uh, it's more of like a legacy kind of project that I'm doing. But basically, I think about what do I want my daughter to know? If she is growing up, if she's getting older, when she becomes an adult, what are the things that I want her to know? And one thing that I kind of wish I could understand better is what was my mom like when she was my age? I can talk to her now about what she was like, but I think as we get older, our view of what happened, we kind of forget some of the ups and downs. We forget like when my baby was a baby, I remember if I really think about it, I can remember some of those hard times where I was really freaking tired. She would just cry and cry. And I was just like, you know, how am I going to make this work? How am I going to make this business work and be a good mom? And I really would like her if she decides that she wants to have kids as she gets older, I would really like her to be able to hear from me when I was her age and say, you know, this is what mom was struggling with. Oh, this is normal. Okay. Like I can do this too. She did this. And I want her to have that. And then because I had that cancer scare, it's important to me too that I know the things that I'm thinking and feeling now that I'm able to pass that along, even if, you know, she gets older and I'm not there with her. And hopefully I will be long, around for a very long time, but I know that life is precious and I know that it's unexpected and, and I just want to have that just in case. Um, and then the fourth one that we actually just started is it's a private podcast for our family and mm -hmm. it's, it's songs that we've done. So there's an AI generation tool or an AI song generation tool called Udio, U-D-I-O. And basically you say, I want a song about this in this style. So like my daughter's name is Gracie. I want a song about Gracie playing soccer in a style that she can dance to. And so we press enter on it and it generates a few different options. And then you can keep expanding on it until it's a full song and it comes up with the music, it comes up with the words, but it actually has her name in it which is super cool. And she really loved it. She loved dancing to it. But she, every time her name came on, she was like, that's my name. And so we did it for her. But then I was like, I want to do one for me too. And so now I have one that anytime I'm like lacking motivation or lacking feeling that imposter syndrome or whatever it is, I put on the song that I made for myself that has my name in there that talks about how I'm, you know, a baddie and like I can do anything. And I'm like, yes, I can. <laughs> so I'm dancing to this music that AI wrote for me about me. It's just a really cool. Yeah, it's just really cool to kind of use it in that way. So those are some of the podcasts and private podcasts that we have going on right now. And then, of course, I have public podcasts, too. There's nothing out of the norm about those. It's just a, it's a normal podcast. I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong. We'll make sure we put <laughs> right. the link down below to it, too. I mean, people have been doing podcasts for a while. So that's what I'm trying to say with that. But yeah, that's how we're using Hello Audio right now. Oh, my goodness. I love all of these. I, I want to break it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll start with the, the course and membership. No, because I think that's really important as you had the experience as a listener, as a consumer, mm -hmm. which I think all business owners, we're all consumers that we buy coaching programs or mentorships or online courses or all the things because there's a lot of stuff we need to know to make this happen. So mm -hmm. we tend to be consumers. So I love the fact that you had the epiphany that this is useful and helpful for you to be more mobile, to have more mobile consumption because as you know, business owners, moms, all of our people are busy. And so mobile consumption is really important. We need to unlock mm -hmm. all the hours of the day where your people are not sitting at the screen, right? I don't know how many more hours we can sit at the screen for right. some of us. Like, <laughs> Max and out. So I love the fact that you do that. I'm curious, when you started um, offering those for your content, and I know you, you have more than, you, you do a lot of content creation. Do you remember any of the responses or the reaction from your students and your customers and how you find the engagement is higher or are you looking at metrics on the back end to see consumption? So I, I do get a lot of people that are saying it was really helpful. They're glad that we have it. They appreciate that we have that option. And then I do, we have like side chats too for the program or for AI 200K, for example. And so in there, people be like, oh, I listened to this episode and it was really good. And I like this part about it. 
And every once in a while, I'll also drop a um, AI generated, like my clone voice version. Like I've been sick a few times when I wanted to release an episode. And so I'll type it up and then put it in. I'm like, all right, can you tell? And so we get to do that kind of stuff too. And they get to experience that. But I, there's just a lot of folks that say, I really appreciate that this is here. It makes it really easy for me to use. That's the main feedback we get that it's just, it's easy, it's accessible. And I see more people saying and engaged because of it. Yeah, I think, and we've seen, I mean, from other users, we've seen an increase in retention mm-hmm. just because for many of us, that's one of the biggest reasons we tend to see yeah. churn in memberships or our courses is we just don't have time or that's a very common complaint, right? Mm-hmm. That we don't have time, but now we're giving back those moments that they otherwise wouldn't have been able to consume the content, which I think is, mm-hmm. is really important to think that's awesome. The other way that you use it, I want to talk a little bit about, which is kind of this this legacy project, which mm-hmm. is huge. And I think this is one of those things. Now, I am definitely of the older, I'm Gen X, so I'm older, right? <laughs> like, I got, but also very much like where we had, you know, tapes for voicemail, mm-hmm. <laughs> like before we had phones. But I remember um, listening to my dad before he passed and having mm-hmm voicemails and and knowing how precious the voice recordings were at the time, right? And Mm -hmm. and knowing that now having Hello Audio, knowing that I can then preserve some of my wisdom or some of my knowledge for my kids, you know, hopefully, like you said, we're hopefully we're here for a really long time. I would like to, you know, love nothing more than for everyone to be here, but also to be able to know that's an option. Is that something that you, I just, I love this thought so much. And when you were were thinking about doing this and passing it on to your kids, is it something that I know for me, I wish I would have had this from my parents or mm-hmm. from my loved ones or friends, but even my mm-hmm. best friend, right? There's, we can learn things from a lot of people in our lives. And I'm curious what kind of what the reaction was in your family. Have you told, and she might be too young to know that this exists yet. You may not have shared it, but if you told other folks and what maybe their reaction to something like this, because I think it's something everyone would be like, oh, I should totally do it. Yeah. So uh, she's only, she's not even in kindergarten yet. So she you oh, know, doesn't tiny. know that it even exists. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, she doesn't know it exists yet. I, I'm going to do it for family members too, as like gifts. So like interviewing my in-laws uh, and having a private podcast with some of their answers and stuff. I, I mean, we don't really think about this stuff until, you know, until it's too late. Like, I wish that I still had videos or audios of my grandparents talking and things that they had said. But, you know, when I'm in middle school, I'm not thinking, I'm not thinking about those things. But I do have this one audio of my grandma singing. She was a wonderful singer. She would yodel like she was really incredible. And I have that one video of it. And it is very, very precious to me. Yeah, I, I want to be able to offer that if, if somebody wants it. If my daughter doesn't, that's fine. But at least she has it if she wants it. Oh, I love it. And she will want it. I didn't realize she was so young, which I love, Mm -hmm. I think. And I, because I'm on the opposite spectrum of my daughter's about ready to graduate. Mm -hmm. But now as she moves away, they don't really answer the phone. I guess that's the thing. Now they just, we don't answer the phone, which (laughs) is fine. But for a private podcast, you can easily slip an episode in there and let them know kind of what's happening while they're away from home. And Mm -hmm. and Hello Audio lets you know when they're listening. So we kind of Mm -hmm. have like, hey, she's still listening. That's a good thing. Yeah. But I love the fact that you're creating this legacy and this just, I I think, a a treasure for her as she gets older. And I think that's huge. I think that's a great use of audio that has absolutely Mm -hmm. nothing to do with business. And I think it's Mm -hmm. by far like one of the most important things. I think that's awesome. It's a treasure for me too to be able to go through and create that and just think through what is it? I think it's also helped me be more intentional as a parent too than I would have otherwise been because I'm thinking what's most important for me that she knows as she's growing up. And so not only then am I talking about that in the episodes, I'm also talking about it more in real time right now because I'm thinking about what are the things that I want her to know. And so it's like uh, this double benefit that we're having. Love that. And it really speaks because when you, even your work in business, I feel like is always, like you said, it's deeper than just business. And it really is meant to impact families and those are your loved ones around you. And I think that just, that's just another great example of how you're doing that. So I love mm-hmm. the fact that you're doing that too. Super cool. And I got to say, this thing with with the music, I mean, this blew me away. I didn't even know it was a thing. Granted, I know mm-hmm. we're all busy, but that to know that you can create affirmations, you can create, think about all the things in the, I mean, because you know, the inner voice and I know you coach entrepreneurs mm-hmm. on mindset things and how important it is to make sure that you are 
having a more positive inner, maybe inner dialogue than mm-hmm. some of us do when it does get bad. Because in full transparency, whether you're a nine figure business or you're just getting started, there's struggles at every single point, every milestone along the way, and no business has it all together. And it's just, you know, just the problems look different as you grow, um, but everyone is experiencing them. And I love the fact that you're creating and, and, and teaching people how to create something that's a tool that's not only fun and innovative, but also really, really impactful for, for people on their journey, no matter what they're going through. Yeah, I, I see a lot of this like on TikTok and stuff, especially for parents where they're like teaching kids these little mantras and stuff like that. And I love that. And so then being able to put it into like a full on song that we can just listen to in the background and stuff is it just feels like it's next level. And it's it's like creating your environment intentionally in every way possible. And I remember when I was teaching and I was like, okay, I don't have money to go to any of these conferences that I want to go to with people that are doing things that I want to do in business. I don't have money to hire them one on one. I don't have money. You know what I mean? Like I didn't have money for a lot of things, but I had money to get their audiobook. And actually... I don't even think I had money for that. I think I was, um, the library had this like overdrive or something it was called. Oh, yeah. And you could listen to audio. Yeah, you could listen to audiobooks for free. And I was like, okay, I can be mentored by these people for free through their book. That's what I'm going to do. And so I feel like it's another way that we can intentionally set up our environment so that even if like, let's say, you, you like you said, you're just starting out, you can still control your environment a little bit more by what you're feeding into it with music. Because there's a lot of songs I love on the radio, but then when I listen to the words, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is not what I want to be feeding my mind yeah. right now. Or okay. I love the beat, but I'm like, oh, I really don't like how they, you know, say this and this and this about people or whatever. And so this really gives us the opportunity to have some beats that we like or some choruses that we like that actually enhance our life instead of, you know, make us walk away feeling kind of icky. It's yeah. I can tell you, so I'm going to play the old card because I am, I, there's beat songs that I really enjoy and I have absolutely zero idea what the lyrics are done, like mm-hmm. whatsoever. And I, cause I'm, I'm that person. I'm like, I have no idea what they're saying, but and then you Google it. You're mm-hmm. thinking, oh, maybe I shouldn't really enjoy this song as much as, right. or maybe I shouldn't blast this in the neighborhood while I'm driving <laughs> around just because I like the beat, right? But then I'm like, whoops, that yeah, my bad. But I love that you can still customize the style that you might be in the mm-hmm. mood for, especially if you have eclectic taste. Like you can do mm-hmm. different types and you can customize it with words that are meaningful and impactful. And I will, I'm going to, this is going to be a throwback. You may not know about this. When I was a kid, because this is old and I'm, I'm going old school, we used to have, because we never had those customized audio mm-hmm. was huge. And there was a company, and I don't remember exactly what the company's name, but it was a happy birthday company. And it was always about, it was like, um, uh, my name is Zoom and I live on the moon and I came down to earth just to sing you this tune. And I'm not going to sing it because I'm a horrific singer, but it was, it was personalized. You could buy the tape and back in the day, it was an actual tape and I think I moved to CD, right? But now it's digital, of course, but you can put your name in there. And it was huge for these kids, right? That was the extent of what you could do with personalization. And you had to order your specific name and you had to get their pronunciation right back in the day. And now the fact that you could just create on demand a song with your daughter's name in it and get that reaction and that extreme. Because I remember how amazing that mm-hmm. was to get that zoom on the moon. And it's how silly, but yet so impactful. And now mm-hmm. you can create those experiences for family members. And even I'm sure you get invited to a lot of different birthday parties. And as you will for the last, for the next God knows how many years, right? And so to be able to do those types of things is really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really neat. And I really think that it's a new level in creating our own reality. I think there's a lot of people that love AI, a lot of people that hate AI, a lot of people that are concerned about AI. But for all the things that are out there, there's a lot of good that can come with it too, I think. And I think a lot of opportunity to make the world a better place by how we use it and how we live with it. And so, yeah, so that's kind of how I feel about it, I guess. Love it. Oh, my goodness. And I know, I, I think for you, too, because I know you've spoken on several stages and I know you were, you, there was, a, I think, a few sprint, like, dents of a lot of travel. Do you yeah. listen just personally? I'm assuming you consume a lot of audio as well, just with your life and yeah. style. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And any of the courses that I have that have specifically Hello Audio, because that is the easiest one, in my opinion, to use, but um, like as a consumer, too, not just as a user, but. Any of the courses that I have, I like to listen to those while I'm traveling. Like uh, over the next, I think, six months, I'm traveling to like seven or eight different states. And so there's just a lot of travel there. So I could either listen to music that doesn't really get me anything, or I can listen to courses. I can listen to podcasts. I can listen to my own stuff. 
and kind of go from there. I do actually really like listening to the Beyond the um, Business Plan, the the private podcast that we have that's paid. I like listening to that because I get to hear where I was six months ago, a year ago, and be like, oh, look how far we've come because it's hard. You know, it's easy to forget that. And so I like doing that too sometimes. But yeah, I listen to a lot. That's awesome. That advice right there, the whole, uh, you know, stay in the, the gate or gain versus the gap, right? And how mm -hmm. entrepreneurs in general, we tend to look at, wow, we so have so much more to achieve or mm -hmm. we're so far away from that milestone, but we don't often reflect. And so, you know, everyone that does document their progress, not only is it great, like you said, for other people in terms of their journey and, and helping them learn the lessons that you have learned along the way. And also, I think there's a level of just being transparent about the struggle and being at your, you know, connection. I think that's one thing I see with your audience is that you really do foster genuine connection because of how transparent you are. Yeah, we see that a lot. I think one of the reasons I mentioned earlier that I have had a lot of different business models, I've tried out a lot of different ones. And that's one of the reasons I think I went away from like the agency work, because a lot of times with agency, I felt like I had to be like prim and proper all the time. And that was probably self-imposed, to be honest. But I kind of felt like I had to be that way. But doing one to many, I really get to be vulnerable. Like I like to be, be authentic, be able to say, here's the ups, here's the downs. Here's where I'm at right now, but here's where I was last week. <laughs> and so I like being able to share those things. And with that one to many model, you get to do that more easily, I think, because then the people that appreciate that and want that, they find you. And then the ones that don't, they leave and that's fine too. But it's just, it felt a little bit, easier for me to show up in the way that I wanted to show up and have the kind of impact that I wanted to have with the model that I have now where we have a membership slash subscription and then the program. I think that's really important. Now, for, for people, I know there's going to be some people listening. Like you said, there's going to be folks in, in all different types of camps and different familiarity with technology. And not everyone is a podcaster or even listens to podcasts. So for those people who are listening, and are thinking maybe about experimenting with private podcasts or even experimenting with AI. Because there's some of us that have just kind of, you know, dipped their toes in, I would say, the water a little bit. And then others that have gone and they're creating songs with AI that are principal, <laughs> which I think is awesome. Like taking that, you know, to a different level of experimentation. For someone who's sitting there listening and maybe is a little bit of a hesitant to kind of take the dive. Do you have any tips or insights for someone who is kind of in that, experiencing that hesitation? Yeah, I think the best thing to do is to go into it with like a kind of an attitude of curiosity of how could I make this work for me? Uh, you probably will see a lot of people being like, oh, you can do it this way and make a bazillion dollars. And you might look at it and be like, oh, how they're doing it makes me feel a little icky. It doesn't seem quite ethical. And so you're going to see some of that. Ignore the ones that it doesn't feel right for you. And then look at it from that curiosity of how can I make this work for me? in a way that feels aligned for me in the way that feels legal and or not legal. I mean, yes, legal, but Definitely ethical legal. is what I was yeah. looking for. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but ethical, especially, or is what I was thinking of there. Find the people that are using it in a way that resonates with you and then commit to learning from them. And then I would say just get started as soon as you can, because I don't see a world where we aren't using this. I mean, it's out of the bag. Like it's, it's happening. I don't think we're going to be able to put it back in ever. And so I would say lean into it sooner than later. Uh, so that you can still kind of be ahead of it with that. And then if it's really intimidating to you, you can use it for your personal life instead to begin with. One of the ways I use it, for example, is I can go downstairs right now and take out my phone and take a picture of my fridge and basically say, uh, based on what you see in the fridge, tell me what I can make for dinner tonight only using these ingredients. And it'll look at the picture. It'll tell me what I can use. And I can even be like, actually, I don't want anything that has meat in it or I don't want anything that has gluten in it or whatever. And it can do that too. And then I can ask for an ingredient list and instructions and all of that. And that's, for me, kind of breaking into the personal side of things as a little bit less intimidating than the business side of things. Another one that you can use is if you don't like doing chores, which I don't, but you can be like, all right, here's all the things we need to get done in our house. We have dishes, we have laundry, we have sweeping the floors, whatever. We have this many people in our house at these different ages, or we have you know, me and my spouse and then my child that's under five. What is a chore list that we can do where we're all sharing the chores? Also, here's our personality. So like for me, I'll talk about I have a really hard time doing tasks for a long time. Like I get distracted or I just get really bored. And so I'm like, I need sprints. <laughs> and so it'll make it fun for me. It'll give me ideas on how I can do the dishes and sprints while also making it feel like a game. So I actually get it done. 
And so those are some ways that you can use it that might feel a little bit less intimidating than jumping right into the business side of it. My goodness, those are fantastic examples of how to do it. And and it, you're right. I think we can imagine and maybe envision productivity gains in our personal life sometimes a little bit easier than we can maybe in business, especially depending on mm -hmm. operational complexity of your business and, and how many what you've got going on and what you're selling. But I love those examples. And I'm honestly, I'm going to take that picture of the fridge and be like, it's just going to say, you need to go to the store. You need to go to the store right now. <laughs> they try, try again. <laughs> I love those examples. I'm curious too, for someone who it has kind of experimented with AI and I think they're looking to take it a little bit further. And I know we're going to put links to your programs and things down below. So if they're interested, I definitely want them to check it out. And you should, if it's something you're interested in. Talk to me a little bit about what you would recommend for next steps for people in terms of maybe the content you want to point them to to get started. So I have a lot of content that I put out on YouTube, on TikTok, on Instagram. And so when you're looking for AI content, I would say the best place probably to start is either AI Copy Club. If you're like, I just need one single thing to do every single week, we'll send that to you. And soon there won't even be a member area you have to log into. There will just be one video, one prompt, take care of it. Boom, you're done for the week. Like you've done your AI tasks for the week, you're good. And then if you're like, no, I really want to dive into this and utilize AI in every aspect of my business, my life, to be able to launch and make more money, to be able to have things on evergreen and make more money, to not be, you know, working all the time and make more money than AI to 100K is really a good option for you. And the community that we have in there is really solid and really, really encouraging us. It's, it's not that like bro marketing feel. It's like, how can we make this work for us and our lifestyle while helping, you know, grow our businesses at the same time without neglecting the people that we love the most. Love that. Yeah. You'll find some really amazing other examples and just really great ways that people are using it in there as well, which I really love. Now I'm curious. So for, and you've been using Hello Audio for probably a good, I don't know, 18 months, or maybe it's, it's yeah. been about a year and a half to almost two years. I'm curious if you have thought about sometimes, and this may not be the case, Sometimes we have folks that are sitting on a private podcast or a way that they want to use it, but they just haven't had the bandwidth or the capacity to do it yet. Do you have something that you've maybe been sitting on, but just haven't kind of done yet or something that's on the back burner? Yeah, we have a few things. One, we started and then I stopped because I just felt a little overwhelmed by it. And that's actually before AI came out. So now I'm like, oh, I could probably do it. But it was uh, leverage my learning. It was a private podcast where anytime I go to a conference, because I go to a lot of you know, different conferences and stuff like that. And there's a lot of them that folks can't get to. And so I would just summarize, here's what I learned from this. Here's the action steps I'm going to take. Uh, and so that's one I think we'll probably be starting up here again soon. And then another one is our um, type 2 rebellion one. So I have type 2 diabetes. And when I first found out about it, I was like, oh my gosh, what do I even do from here? Because I also have to be gluten-free. <laughs> so I'd go to the grocery store and I'd be like, cool, the only thing I can eat is ice and sadness. Like that's all, that's all that's left for me here. And um, it was just really frustrating and overwhelming. And I remember crying a little bit in the grocery store. And I know there's other people that are experiencing that, that are going through that, that have the entire world, it feels like, telling them, well, you have this because you're lazy or you have this because you eat candy all the time. And that's just not the case. <laughs> like, I'm one of the least lazy people that I've ever met. And, and so it was really hard to kind of work through that. And I'd love to be able to encourage other people that are in that space that it doesn't have to be a death sentence. It doesn't have to define you. Um, like you can conquer this and there's just a lot of options. Yeah. And just kind of share my story with that. So that's, that's another one I see us coming out with here in the future. I love it. I'm, and we'll have to have you back on when you do, because I mean, I love your ideas and I love that you are positioning yourself to just make it easy for you. I think audio is easier than yeah. maybe video production or other things. Personally, I find it a lot easier, especially on the editing front, but I think mm -hmm. the way that you've incorporated audio in your business and in your personal life in all aspects to make it just easier and aligned with the life you want to live. I, I love that. And I love, I hope there's some takeaways here for everyone listening that you have the ability to do that as well and kind of just like life by design. Can I, um, speaking of that, I wanted to mention how I'm recording these. I think at least for me, when I first started recording, I was like, oh, it has to be in this perfect background. I have to have these perfect, like I bought these giant lights to put on, that I don't even have on right now, but I have all these lights and I have these supplies. And I had, at one point I had this like giant thing to record. I haven't used it because I don't know how to use it because it looks like something from Star Trek. I don't know. But I was so stuck on having to have the perfect audio and ha having the perfect microphone and stuff like that. 
The majority of times that I record, though, is in the car on the way home. I use a just like a voice recorder app on my phone and that's it. And then I have the VA on my team, Judy. She'll take that recording. Like I'll send it to her on Slack. She takes the recording. She adds studio sound to it. She takes out the filler words and we put it up. It's not it doesn't have to be like this hugely massive, complicated thing. You don't have to have the best microphone there's ever been. You don't have to have like gold dripping from your ears. You can just record it on your phone. I mean, it it may not be ideal. There's going to be times where it's a little choppy, but I think it's better to get it out there and to be helping people with it than for no one ever to hear it because it wasn't quote unquote perfect. So that's just my little plug to take action and to take action right away, even if it doesn't feel perfect. Of that. Yeah, I wouldn't, you know, maybe not record in a windstorm. But aside from right. that, there's a lot of things. And don't forget, Hello Audio also integrates with Dolby.io. So you can remaster right in the app. So if you don't love, awesome. you don't have to buy a special tool to remaster if that's not your thing or if that you don't have an assistant to do it, you can do it right in the app as well. And that is definitely something I have done because I have recorded with dogs snoring right next to me for sure have done that. Oh my goodness, this has been so much fun talking with you today. We have one question that we kind of end cap all of our case studies episodes on. And that question is, if you had a private podcast with your life's musings, what would it be called? I think I'd probably be called something like the valleys and the mountain peaks, something like that, that incorporated like the ups and downs of everyday life and just how beautiful it can be, not only when you're on the peak, but also when you're in the valley because of what you're learning, the resilience you're building, the grit that you're building up and how it's all this part of this beautiful masterpiece. Maybe I call it masterpiece. I don't know. Something like that. Hey, and you know what? We can change it. That's the cool part about it. It can so is evolve. Or we can ask AI what it would call it. So I think we can Mm -hmm. totally do that too. But I love what you said. I think this is really important and it speaks volumes to just, you know, your values and just who you are as a person. And I love that you can see the beauty in everything and you can also help others do it too by being transparent Mm -hmm. and by letting people know that it's all part of it. That's the journey that's beautiful. It's not just all the wins. Mm -hmm. And I really, I really appreciate that about you and the community that you've built. So thank you for that. Thank you. Appreciate that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here and we'll definitely have you back on when those new podcasts launch. There you have it, audio heads. Another episode of Launch a Private Podcast is in the books. I hope you're leaving today feeling even more ready to amplify your voice and connect with your audience in meaningful ways. The adventure continues in our next episode with even more insights, strategies, and inspiration to help you along your own private podcasting journey. Of course, make sure to check out helloaudio.fm to start your own private podcast. And remember, you've got amazing content that needs to be heard. So let's turn the volume up. Until next time.